Alright. So fancy. Alright. There we go. We're live. Not yet, but close. Oh. I noticed that intro music wasn't playing, so I'm going to hold my headphones right here to the microphones. Is that how Is you it? know where you're yeah, at? It wasn't it play? play? Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to Limitless Lifestyle. <laughs> I'm your host, Eli Haddad. I am the founder and CEO of Lifestyle Real Estate, and I'm here with my good friend, Kush Rathod. And we have a special guest today, the managing broker of the mothership yes. of Lifestyle <laughs> instead of flagship. Somebody yes. told me to change it to mothership. To the mothership, Jenny Jackson. Welcome, Jenny. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thanks first for time joining ever. us. This first live feed. First time ever. Oh man, ever. this is a ever, way ever. to lead by example. <laughs> way to lead by example. I'm going I think, out of my box. Yeah, but you're it, doing it, great. You're doing great. We're doing great. It's pretty easy. I like, like. I think I can turn off that monitor if it makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. I don't know what to look at. <laughs> <laughs> you can look at me and look at the camera over there, but. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. We've been yeah. doing, having a lot of fun with these shows. Kush, yes. you want to start us off with some yeah, questions? absolutely. So right off the bat, what's, the, what's your favorite thing about being a broker? Um, I think the favorite thing that I'm, I'm learning how the business works, mm -hmm. yeah. the flip side, I've been on the agent side for a very long time. Yes. So I'm enjoying that. I'm also enjoying being a part of a leadership team and helping grow. And I like talking to agents. I love giving advice. Very good at it. Yeah. You're great at sharing. Absolutely. You're great at sharing, absolutely. I've seen uh, yes. it. I've seen, like, you talk with other agents, and, mm -hmm. like, when they leave your office, they have a smile on their face, or, like, they feel like they've learned something, you know? Oh, well, thank you. That, that's very mm -hmm. nice. I'm very, ob like, ob 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 mm -hmm. what's the word? Observational person? Yeah. Yes. I'm just ready to grow that next part of my business. I've been selling for 17 years. Wow. This month. Oh, oh, congratulations. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's a long time. I always you got knew. me by two years. Okay. You got me by 15. Okay. <laughs> I always knew I would get my broker's license after my son was done needing me. So now he's 17, driving himself around. Oh, and big boy. Mm -hmm, I have more time. All right. That's good. So that's why I started selling was to be available to my son. So what got you track on to becoming a broker was you were one of our uh, most successful mentors. Um, so um, tell us about what the mentoring program has meant to you as being a mentor and um, do you feel like it's rewarding or you know give us your feelings on, on the mentor pro mentoring uh, new licensees and what that what that means to you. Well, I enjoy mentoring and bringing new agents in. We were all new once. Um, there's some mentors that come in with a few years experience and you just kind of help mold them into the next steps of growth, which, you know, that's one thing in real estate. Your first day as a realtor, you, there's no real first day job description. What are you going to do first? <laughs> that's true. And yeah. so it's all about creating a plan and I'm great with plans yes yes you are <laughs> my husband will tell you I have a list for everything nothing wrong with lists yeah it's organization um so I like to show agents how to get started from the ground up first thing you know they really need to do is the CRM yes I didn't get into a CRM until about five or six years into my business and then it's scrambling to catch up so I think that's the most important thing. And then just, you know, guiding them on where to find business, yes. how to talk to people, learning how to do a buyer consult. You know, you, you, have, you have to yeah. in this day and age. Absolutely. Set the expectation yes. because that will make the difference in whether your transaction goes smoothly or not. Absolutely, I agree. Totally. I think uh, the buyer consultation, we've had that conversation with other people that we've interviewed is that Expectations is everything, um, and it makes your job a hundred times easier yeah. to yep. um, yeah. just set that on the front end. Yep. Um, so tell us, give us a success story about one of your mentors. Yeah. Well, you all know Karen Gibbs is one of yeah. my yes. former mentees, and 
she's actually starting to help me a little bit in my business and some of the outer counties things I can't get to nice. and so it's I'm, I feel like I'm still kind of guiding yeah because she has a lot of knowledge in the Frankfurt area Georgetown where we've gotten some referrals and even say Harrison County and lots and so she's able to teach me something which nice. is kind That's of cool good. but I'm also teaching her how to manage some clients in difficult situations so it's a win-win That's good. Yeah. it's like this environment promotes the sharing and care for others eventually yes. you know it's not yes. like one way yeah you know? uh-huh yeah I mean it's obviously uh, rising tides raises all ships and that's our, our goal um, as an organization and being conscious about that and being heart led and just really you know the I think the core of the mentor program is just that we care enough about these people to try to help them build a career right. it used to be years ago when we first started the mentor program it was uh, voluntary mm -hmm. so you can choose to join, do it or not to do it and I can tell you if there was 10 people that uh, were brand new licensees and in 12 months if uh, the, the agents that did the mentoring program, let's say uh, that start that started and finished the mentoring programs after 12 months, they're the ones that stayed in the business uh, and continued going. It's the ones that didn't do the mentorship. We had 10 agents, um, half of them did the mentoring program, half of them did it. I can tell you of the people that did the mentoring program, um, four of them were still in business a year later and the other six people were out of business or had to go get a second job. Or, well, yeah, and I was just reading somewhere that like 87% of agents fail their first two years and they're out of the business. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge wow. number. We have a, there's an interesting statistic because there were so many people that um, signed up uh, and became real estate agents and took the classes during COVID. I mean, it was a ridiculous number. Were you? Was that you're one of them, no, right? No, no. So Aww. the fact that you're, you're still COVID a, baby. I am. You're a COVID baby. <laughs> All right, I'm a COVID baby apparently. I love that. That's great. That's that's a new name for our 2020 agents. We call them COVID babies. But what what we'll see what we're gonna see happen at the end of this year, we're gonna lose about 20 percent of those agents. It's expected. Um, yes. And we're gonna lose 20 percent of the agents in all rosters across. Um, real estate offices around the country. But of the 20% we're gonna lose, uh, I think some like 80% of them will be the ones that started in 2020. And the other 20%. Oh, wow. So like, and a lot of it is, I mean, I we've, you know, this, it's the end of the year and it was time, El Bar dues were coming up and I had, I think maybe two or three of the um, 2020 agents move to our, either referral company or to our um, low cost um, company works real estate and um, yeah. so we're gonna see a bunch of that and that's the, in, a lot of in the way that that transition goes it's always two years behind so it'll be like 2023 and 2024 yes. we're gonna see these drops in agent rosters and agent counts um, and a lot of the reason that um, a lot of the reason that the um, um, a lot of the the transactions per agents are down just because of the massive number of real estate agents there are. So markets. One point six million agents. Yeah. agents? One point six million well, agents. Over one point, one and a half. And how many? I can't remember how many houses were sold, but it was something. The average was like two two transactions per agent or something yeah. crazy. Like that. But you can still find success in the market. Absolutely. And yes. it's by learning to prospect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Qualify buyers and sellers. Yes. And so I know we've been offering classes here on that same thing. And, you know, I remember I started in 06, 05, 05, something like that. So it was like um, really hot. And yes, and then the next year it went, whoo. Fell off a cliff. <laughs> yes, yeah, but the cliff. at the same time, you know, when I was going through trainings and stuff, they told new agents, listen, this is not the end of the road. This is your chance to yes. step up and make an impression on someone. Not totally. So yeah. don't stop. Hit it hard because these other agents that have been doing it for a long time aren't doing the things they need to be doing to stay on top of their clients. Absolutely. So I kind of look at that in the same way right now. Yes. Newer agents, agents in the business need to stay on top of their sphere, stay on top of their business, and they won't lose as much traction. I think one, another thing that one of the advantages, so uh, 
as you know, we're implementing a more thorough mentoring program with more checks and balances between the mentor and the mentor. Mm -hmm. yes. One of the selling points that we're going to do to entice more mentors, because we, we pay the mentors based on the income of these mentorees so that they're invested in these agents because right. they're basically being the broker um, and all the little broker things that could be that needs to be trained. But the other thing that's really part of our step-by-step -step program of doing this is is that I kind of want the mentors to see the ba is it, we're talking about the basics of like reaching out to people, yeah. sending them just a letter, just reminding them that you're still in the business. Yeah. One of the mm -hmm. things is is like uh, sending five cards out a week to uh, friends and family, just mm -hmm. with a business card in it. Yeah. Part of that is, is I want the mentors to be like, man, I really need to get back to doing this stuff too. It was like, yeah. this is the core stuff. And, and, this is and, and even the, um, where I was, you and I were having the conversation about Carol and what she does in her coaching yeah. is, is the, like, the thing is about building a real estate business, the core processes of the business have not changed since the 1970s, yeah. which is just reaching out to people yes. and, and providing a service. There were some shifts, like in the when the market gets super hot, you get these agents that are coming in and just doing massive sales on a based on the market. But the reality is, is like if you want to run your business, you can you can go probably pick up one of the oldest real estate books in the market out there, and and just follow the the core basic processes, mm -hmm. and it's a good reminder for mentors to mm -hmm. to yes. do that as well, and just you know just being that top of mind realtor. And I hope something we are going to add into this mentoring program, which not everybody's a fan of, and I hate it is the role playing and learning scripts because the most that's important the thing. first thing that new agents will say, well, how do I talk to them? What do I say? And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. That's a hard question. <laughs> but it is. I mean, yeah. they don't teach you that in school. They don't. No, I mean, I yeah. remember going, you know, I was starting, like, there are a lot of things that I didn't learn in school. But granted, I did go to a good real estate school. You know, 100% did go to. But there are just some things that no school teaches. And yeah. how do you get that experience? Well. I'll tell you what I did. It was kind of weird, but I talked in front of a mirror. No, that's great. You know? There's nothing weird about that. That's actually a great thing to do because you need to see your face. <laughs> like, how do I look saying this right yeah. now? Like, how's my? Do my I believe tone? me? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, it really helped me. I think. And then, like, I've been talking to customers since I was a baby with my family's business. But talking to clients, you know, talking about the largest asset of their life—that's a different story yes. entirely. You know, so. Practice makes perfect again. Which, again, the more you know, the easier it is to talk. That's yes. why I feel like one of the biggest things is to just educate yourself. Absolutely. Educate yourself and then... And learn about pages. the neighborhoods and yes. every county and yes. be able to give average sale prices and, you Man, know... Man, I was a brand new agent. I used to do that all day. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, would just look up properties and then if they were vacant, sometimes I would set up appointments and just go walk through them. Um, just no intent to buy. We, and mind you, when I was 16, we both went to Takes Creek High School. Do you oh, remember really? when they were building the big houses in the early 90s on when you get when it goes to sh turns into Shinaway on the right? Mm -hmm. when, well, that was about 96, 97, 96. They were building these big houses down Takes Creek Road, monsters. And I would go skip school and go walk through the construction sites at 16 years old, oh, and I would wow. drive through and just like in amazement. So, yes, when I did get my real estate license, I would find vacant properties. And back in. Well, we time, both lived in Cumberland Hills. Yes. That's and right. I lived in Cumberland Hills when it was new. Oh, yeah. So they were building houses all around me, and we would go walking through, even though we weren't supposed to. Yeah. You know, I mean, you just, that's what you did. Especially down by the creek in the back. Mm -hmm. And they had like little dirt tracks that you could run your bikes through. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was good times. <laughs> it was good times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think. Um, um, back on to the, the subject about new agents and the core basics of real estate. I mean, that's what the mentoring program is all about, is like seeing, what, getting back to the basics. And the crazy thing is, is that every time there's a big market shift, all these real estate coaches do the exact same thing. They go really back do. to the basics. <laughs> that's the basics. It's like, yeah. you know, when the market's hot, everybody can get mm -hmm. as many buyers, clients as they want. I mean, right yeah. now we just don't have the listings for it. And when you're not busy, the best thing to do is go to a class. You can always take away one thing you didn't know before yes. you went into class. Yeah. There's Absolutely. always one thing you can learn. I agree, 100%. I'm Whether it's big or small, it's yeah. one extra piece. I agree. It's a missing puzzle piece, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, I mentioned this before on our show before, but the agents that come in with the most amount of questions are always end up being the most successful. Because they're just like, they just have this hunger to learn. Yeah. So one of our core values uh, of our company is uh, coachability. So when we, we want 
agents that were willing. We wanted to be like sponges. I used to drive, Coba Craig was my broker on my original uh, brokerage that I worked for was a commercial company. And I was in that dude's office like four times a day. And I would just, like, I would just want to learn. I just yeah. couldn't get enough. And then the other, the other uh, broker or the, other, the owner of the company was Ken Silvestri, who is like the man when it comes to multifamily in Lexington. Yeah. Um, so, and I used to do cold calls for him and I was willing to do those cold calls cause he was like, I'll mentor you for a little bit. And mentoring is so important for every single industry yes. in everything that you do. Like Great. you can have a spiritual mentor, you can have your, yeah. your, your fitness coach fitness is kind coach, of like yeah. a mentor. Absolutely. I mean, even though they're, they're labeled as a coach, but they're really guiding you through what you need to right. do. Guidance. Um, uh, even personal mentors for yes. whatever, whatever you maybe yoga yeah. mentor, whatever. Mental, mental health. Yeah. 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 And you know, the mentees that are always the more inquisitive do better, but my favorite is, but why? And then you answer, but why that? Okay. Why? Like oh, they, yeah. the why, the why, the constant why. Question. And I'm like, yeah. okay. I mean, but it, <laughs> it puts it back on the mentor and they, it, that's yes. how you learn. Mm -hmm. You have to dig that's deep correct. and explain to them why. Yes. So that next time they know. Yes. And then someday they become a mentor and they ask why it's, or answer the why. It's a butterfly effect question about the new contract <laughs> i'm not a fan uh, uh, i'm not a fan because i i believe that we should have done an entire statewide contract um, apparently politics got in the way of that um and i'm not going to blame any one person or but i think it's I think it's Hedge's fault it's, my, I'll take blame it's, it. it's elbar's fault it's not glars because they're mad because the contracts are written towards Louisville agents they sell more real estate. I get I it. No idea. But we need one state contract. What do you feel about the new contract? How do you, do you feel the changes in it are I what you would it's like to see? For, for one. It's longer. The, okay. I Tough like question. some of the changes. Mm -hmm. I think everything is spelled out to where this is where the length comes into play. Yes. Where I would, in my buyer consults, go through our contract that was five pages. Mm -hmm. And it would hit all the highlights, you know, of what happens. But then I would expand on if this, then that. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a possibility if this happens, you know, and, and we kind of walk through that. And I think some of those scenarios are more spelled out in this contract mm -hmm. so that the agent isn't the only one explaining that. It's like written out. Yeah, yeah. You know, if this happens, then this happens. So right. I think that added to the length quite a bit. Um, and just some of the definitions. I think the guts of it are pretty good. It's just getting all of our forms now to line up and the listing mm -hmm. agreements, contracts to line up with the new sales contract. So I think it's once all those things are in play, then people will feel comfortable using yeah. it. Yeah, I think it's getting there. I, my holdup isn't with the actual contract itself except that one part about the escrow checks. <laughs> uh, outside of that, I think, well, hey, that's good stuff. But mm -hmm. the, the other thing is, is that we have a fragmented industry. The reason that Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor.com were able to do what they were able to do is because we've been a fragmented industry. Right. And they if you look that. at all these states, and because we're, we're, we're becoming a nationwide company, I get to go see how all these states are set up. Yeah. Oregon has one paperwork for the whole state. And there's more people in Kentucky than there are in Oregon. Uh -huh. And so, like, There's more real estate in yeah, Oregon. North Carolina has got way more people over there, and they basically their biggest metropolitan areas all have one. Con and I'm talking like your six hour drive in every direction. Like Raleigh and Charlotte. Even yeah, from yeah, basically from Charlotte, wow. even past that to like Fort Bragg, all of them use wow. one contract. And then here we are, in uh, little old Kentucky yeah. with 156 counties, with mo more counties than any other state, 136 or 129, everybody it is, but we're. It's like we continue the fragmentation, and if we stay on that path, mm -hmm. we just hurt ourselves in the long run, and that's where I think we're shooting I think ourselves there is in the foot. A, uh, a slow increase in consolidation, I guess. Yeah. We are seeing more mergers happening. I think, though, the process is going to take a long time. Yeah. Right, well. Yeah, I figured it would be before the end of my career, but maybe not. Who knows? Maybe at the end of my career. Probably. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> you got, COVID baby hopefully, you hopefully, you got 25 you more to go. <laughs> Hopefully we got twenty five more to go. Um, Kush, you got, what's? Yeah, I mean, Jenny, maybe a final question. What's your favorite thing about lifestyle? Oh, I love the people here. 
I do. Yeah. Everybody's very welcoming. Um, we just have fun. We, we help each fun. other. Yeah, we do have fun. We, I we mean, we listen to each other's long-winded stories. Events do happen here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Tawanda's not the only one with great stories. You might remember Tawanda, ladies and gentlemen, from the previous episode. <laughs> she was really good, actually. She was fantastic. Oh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a cut, uh, like a quick cut of like her talking, real, yeah. just like a do 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 do, just a reel of her just. Yeah, like, if you come to Northside, da 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 da, and then it'll be a whole like line of things. And uh, I really uh-huh. didn't mess with that it. It's gonna be fun. funny. That but yeah, fun. thank you. I appreciate that. But yeah, yeah, I love the diversity in our office. I we mean, are a quite diverse office, yes. Yes, and everybody has their different why of being in real estate. Yes. And so that's another area where I feel like we're diverse. Absolutely. Yeah, I think another thing I really like about our office personally is I love the entrepreneurship that we see where a ton of our agents are doing Airbnbs, a ton of our agents are doing, um, have their own rentals. Um, Some have their own, um, build construction company. Construction companies, yeah, Patrick yeah. Doyle yeah. kills it with his construction company. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that I really, I think it's like the coolest thing about our office is, is that we feel yeah. there's a bunch of a bunch of agents that are willing to do that. And we have a bunch of big producers. We do. Jim Moore closed 13 million in the month of January. 13 million one month. That's a pretty good month. That's pretty Jim, good. I want to be like you one day. I was like, I just want to be your assistant. <laughs> Can I work for you? Yeah. But, um, so are you, are, are you, one last question actually, because we still okay. actually have some time to go. How do you feel about our Limitless Conference coming up? Oh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a great time. When we, whenever we get together, we have a whole lot of fun. Yes. And it's hard to break up the fun to go home. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to bring in Coach Burt, the speakers. And just hang out for the day and all of us kind of talk real estate. Yeah. It's like a big happy good. family learning together mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah, we have Jim Moore and Marty Preston doing their presentation about uh, partnerships. Uh, referrals. With the referrals and building a referral-based business. Oh, yes. You know, Jim, yes, he represents a, the, the a high-quality builder, but yeah. Yeah, but he also has a 125-person database that he runs yeah. his business out of and is really, really it's powerful. Crazy. Yeah. Um, and I do believe we've got a marketing and branding specialist that's going to be coming on. She's going to be hopefully signed up tomorrow, and we're going to have some vendors there. And then most importantly, we do have a charity auction. Can, yes. you, do you, can you tell us a little about the charity? Yeah, so uh, benefiting an organization called CASA, and uh, all proceeds will go to CASA. And uh, so, I mean, dress to impress, bring your checkbook. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of If fun. you'd like to donate. Yeah. 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 If you'd like to donate, you know. A silent auction or item. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, if you're out, if you're watching this right now, and if you have like an item that you think would be wonderfully showcased at our charity auction, please do contact us. Because, I mean, again, all proceeds are going to CASA. And nice. Yeah. June 9th, it's going to be start at 12, I think, and it'll go to 6. Yeah. And um, I think I've got everybody convinced and they'll let me do an after party. Which may be there, maybe not. I'm going to have a DJ. We may spike the punch. Who knows? I don't know what we'll do. But uh, it is definitely going to be a good time because I like to throw a good party. So we'll, we'll definitely have and that. And Kish likes the spiked punch. <laughs> yeah. It's not alcohol I'm spiking about that. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I think what's in Coach Burt, who actually I've been following since 2015, he actually a really powerful message and really great processes in um, growing your business. He specializes, he actually started off um, just doing ma- mainly business coaches, but a ton of real estate agents went went, went through his systems. Um, and he's got a bunch of cool stuff like uh, plant, daily planner books that, are, that, I, that I've used wow. in the past. That's good. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff. And then uh, we're gonna be doing some book giveaways from him as well. Um, and then we're gonna do early registration of tickets and we'll have a QR link for people to pay. You don't have to be a lifestyle agent to do this. That's no. the other thing is is that this is open to everyone. And actually, yeah. because Coach Burt, his focus is um, uh, really about uh, you know independent contracting, sales, uh, business people, this is a great opportunity for uh, who, people that want to sponsor and get some tickets and bring their bring their staff yeah. in for it. So and hang out with the cool kids. Right? Hang out with the cool kids. Absolutely, and I think that's the beauty of this conference is, again, we don't really care which office the agent belongs to. We're just here to learn that day, you know? Like, that's the beauty of the conference, sharing yeah. the information, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jenny, that wasn't bad, was it? It was no. pretty fun, right? Yeah, as soon we as we get started. Us, right? I mean, it's a beautiful right ocean, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's just like talking to a 
a microphone just jammed yeah. up your nose. And okay, I can cross this off my bucket list. Yeah, so now done. you can do it weekly and start doing it for your own thing. So. Yeah, yeah. Message from the broker. Yay! Well, everybody, thank you guys. Please Thanks leave us a comment. Any, any subjects that you want us to talk about, we'd be happy to uh, jump on here with you guys. Yeah. And um, vendors, if you want to jump on here and jump be on the show with us, we'd be happy to have you as well. Thanks, everybody. Catch you next time. Thank you all. Okay. All right. Yeah, I did. That wasn't bad, right? <laughs>